Sit in the house, rise to your feet, and give the God a God of shots. <laughs> Hallelujah. You are welcome to the day three of the Global Commission 2024. In the name of Jesus, I know that the God of this commission I give you ordinary testimonies. Go to the total entrance of which are there to document your testimony. God speaking in Joshua 1 verse 6, say, be that strong and of a good courage. You will appreciate God for his work coming tonight that will make you strong and courageous. Raise your voice, appreciate God. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we say thank you. We give you all the glory and praise for your work coming that will cause to be strong and courageous. Blessed be your name, mighty God. In the name of Jesus, appreciate him.
good. Jesus, you are kind. Jesus, you are wonderful to us in everything we do. Bless his soul, my Lord. Jesus, you are a
In the name of Jesus. You may please be seated for a moment. Hallelujah. In this session, we're going to God in thanksgiving. In Acts 13, verse 47, For so had the Lord commanded us, saying, I have set thee to be a light of the Gentiles, that thou shouldest be for salvation unto the end of the earth. We thank God for always releasing his right power filled words from the altar of salvation ministries, resulting to incredible testimonies in the life of all participants globally. Rise your feet and appreciate God. Father, in the name of Jesus, he said he sent his word, his word healed them. His word delivered them from their destructions. We give all the praise and glory, mighty God, for always releasing the right word from the altar of salvation ministries that bears incredible testimonies in the lives of those genuinely participating globally. We worship your holy name forever. Blessed be your name in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. In Amos 3 verse 7. Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealed his secret unto his servants, the prophets. We thank God for always revealing the next phase of salvation ministries to David Ibiome and empowering him with his wisdom and grace to accomplish every vision per time. Lift up your voice and appreciate him. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel. Father, we thank you for always revealing the next phase of salvation ministries to your servant David Bibemi. He said, wisdom shall be the stability of the times and strength of thy salvation. We thank you, mighty God, for empowering him. Be thou glorified in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Say, so finally, for this session, in Matthew 11, verse 28, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. We thank God for manifesting his glory and granting all round rest to all genuine attendees of the Global Youth Convention 2024. Lift up your voice and appreciate him. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall sit together. Thank you, Jesus, for manifesting your glory and for granting each and every one all round rest. Bless your name forever in the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty name, I appreciate him. Lord, we oh, thank you, I appreciate you, give you all the glory. Be thou exalted and glorified forever in Jesus' mighty name. You may please be seated for a while in God's presence. In this session, we'll be taking the intercessory prayer, session one. The word of God declares in the book of James 4 and verse 7, say, resist the devil and will flee from you. So we'll pray that every plan of Satan to launch any evil against salvation ministries, including the spirit of death, be destroyed by the blood of Jesus Christ. You so ask the Lord to establish all and peace, preservation and protection for her. So you said to Pray, please rise to your feet. Raise your voice. Pray, Jesus, mighty name. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Satan, the devil, the Lord is appointed. Your devices that your hands cannot perform. Your enterprise for that shall be no hurt, no destroy. And all the holy mountains will come against every of your plan to launch any kind of evil against salvation mysteries, including the spirit of death. We bind you, we cast one. Say, brethren, be of good years, for that shall be no of any man's life among us with the grief by the blood of Jesus Christ. Blood of Jesus we come against every spirit of death for getting access to salvation message with the grief, honor and peace and preservation. And Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus Christ in the book of Psalm 2 and 1 and verse 9 Say, why do the hidden rage and the people imagine vain things? Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. You will decree divine judgment upon any persons that plans to attack salvation missions or any of our arms. You establish a fear and dread upon the wicked. Raise your voice. Pray Jesus' mighty name. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Say, let death cease upon them. Let them go down. Quick into her. For wickedness and the dwellings on the mountain with the great divine judgments upon any person or group of persons that plan in taking to launch any attack against the vessel missions, against the house globally with the great judgment of God upon them today with the great even the informers and sponsors be done today. The Lord shall put a fear and a turn of thee upon the land that shall turn upon where the bit of your dread or salvation of misses upon the wicked forever in the name of Jesus. In Jesus.
Jesus' mighty name. In the book of Psalm 24 and verse 7, say, Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be a little up your everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in, to declare every barrier standing against the growth and spread of salvation ministries in various parts of the world, to declare a continuous growth and dominion. Raise your voice, pray Jesus' mighty name. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, and shall say, Cast up, cast up, prepare the place, take up the stumbling blocks out of the ways of salvation ministries. Lift up your hands, all oh, you guys, be a little, you have a lost in those. We glad to die, every barrier, every obstacle, to the cross, to the spread of salvation ministries, and every part of the world where the great to die. Dominion in the name of Jesus Christ, his dominion shall be from sea to sea, from the rivers to the end of the earth, with a great cross and dominion for her. And Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, in the book of Isaiah 60 and verse 3, and the Gentiles shall come to the light and the kings to the brightness of the rising, to pray that through this year's global convention, God should cause people of all religions, races, tribes, and from all walks of life globally to join salvation with it gladly and be rooted in now. Raise your voice, pray Jesus mighty name. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ and the Spirit said of Philip, go now and join the self to this shadows, say that no difference between the Jews and the Greeks, for the Lord has reached over all. We pray the very serious global conversion, God will cause people from all religions, from all races, from all trusts, and all walks of the world to join salvation of mysteries and be rooted in us. For I was glad when they said to me, Let us have the Lord. And Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name, in the book of Isaiah 60 and verse 18, violence shall no more be heard in the land, wasting or destruction within the borders, but thou shalt call the world salvation and the gates praise. Joel 2 and verse 25, and will restore to you the year that locusts have eaten, to decree that Nigeria shall not suffer from destruction and devastation of any kind, to ask God to restore the dignity of Nigeria as a point of contact to the nations of the earth. Raise your voice, pray Jesus' mighty name. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, violence shall no more be heard. In the land, we are seen of the social, within the borders, we decree today that Nigeria shall not suffer any form of destruction or devastation. Lord, to us, you restore the dignity of Nigeria as a point of contact to the nations of the age of connected. In Jesus. And lastly, for this session, Isaiah 65 and verse 20. There shall be no more tense and infant of days, nor an old man that not fulfill his days. For a child shall die a hundred years old. Psalm 91 and verse 16. For a long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. The opine that cast out the spirit of death and signal from assessing the life, family and genuine loved ones of David the Bermen now or in the future. To ask the Lord to satisfy them for a long healthy life. Raise your voice. Pray this your smart name. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, David, be my family, shall not die, but live to declare the good words of God. When God's words, you speak to death and signal from assassin, the life of family, the general love words of David, be my through enemies, not in the future. When us Lord, you satisfy them, we long out the life in Jesus' mighty name. Know that God has said us, I appreciate him so we thank you. We give you all the glory. Be thou exalted, mighty God, in Jesus' name. Please may be seated for a moment as we take the last section of the prayers. God's word declares in the book of Isaiah, chapter 40, verse 31, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1, finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified even as it is with you. Pray to cast out spirit of weakness from gaining access to David, the Biomir, and family. We ask the Lord to strengthen and give him the words that will bless all under his ministration globally. Raise your voice, stand to your feet, pray in the name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Satan, the devil, it is written, how are thou fallen from heaven? Oh, Lucifer, son of the morning, we come against you. Any attempt of yours to stir up weakness in the lives of family of God's celebrity. Your name, 
there. We bind you. We cast you out by the blood of Jesus Christ. For the blood of the Lord has been in your man. Therefore, no one around is with the world. In the name of Jesus Christ, we cast you out with the weakness. In the name of Jesus Christ, we ask for the Lord to strengthen and keep giving him the right words in all his ministrations. In the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Hosea chapter 12 verse 13. And by a prophet the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. And by a prophet was he preserved. We ask God to keep giving David the Biomir. To keep using David the Biomir as an agent of positive change globally. Restoring hope. Delivering the oppressed. Turning sinners to Christ. And blessing life. Raise your voice. Pray in the name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the written, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to pray the gospel and deliver the copies. We ask of God, my Father, that you keep using God's son every year, making him a positive change in all the clubs. We ask of God, you keep restoring hope, delivering your prayers of the devil, turning sinners to Christ, for it is not your will that any should perish and make him a blessing to everyone around him in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty name, in Psalm 512, for thou, Lord, will bless the righteous with favor, with a compassion as a shield. Isaiah 44, verse 25, thou forsake the tokens of liars and make it deaf diviners mad. We pray against whatever may hinder all youth to look connected to the global convention before from being favored with their desired employment, academic scholarship, contract, job approvals in any part of the world. Pray for divine favor to answer to them. Raise your voice. Pray in the name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. It is written, I do Lord shall walk and who shall last. We come against whatsoever the devil intends to use to hinder every of them of this service in us, we cast you on the blood of Jesus Christ. We decree that every work written shall have the right testimonies, they shall have their favor, they shall be blessed. For the Lord shall bless the righteous with his favor. We declare all and peace and rest for us in the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty name, Isaiah chapter 30, verse 21. And the hears shall hear a word behind them saying, This is the way. Walk here in it when you turn to the right hand and when you turn to the left. We ask the Holy Spirit to give direction to all youth confused or struggling to find their path in life in this sacred conversion. Raise your voice. Pray in the name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. For the Lord, for the Lord shall order the step of every good man in the name of Jesus Christ, they commit your ways and I will direct your path. I will live in God. We ask upon everyone in this service tonight. The Lord will direct our path. Anywhere we are confused or struggling, the Lord shall come in the name of Jesus Christ and bring to us his good treasures in the name of Jesus Christ. And finally for this section, the Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 14, thou shalt be blessed above all people. There shall not be male or female barren among you or among your cattle. We clear every Every satanic siege, causing marital delay or barrenness in the lives of youth. The new connected group is commercial to before. Pray that all youth eligible for marriage and those believing God for the fruit of the womb be visited instantly. Raise your voice and pray in the name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, your word declares that no shall want her man and no one shall be barren in the land. We cause every siege of delay in the lives of youth in the spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, by the blood. Lord of the Christ, we decree that no one shall be barren in the land. We decree that the visited by the Holy Ghost and the miracle be delivered to them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Once again, I appreciate God. God is faithful. BP.
calling for you. I don't need MTN whenever I'm calling on you. And then you answer directly. Your no answer, your blessings like bonanza. No trouble in my life, be like a puna matata. And like the peace and love, you think it's not enough. Save my life and I watch my scenes and you begin it does enough. And if you're wondering why I keep feeling like a dollar note, and that's because I keep on going up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nothing yeah. where I'm from, where you know, go feed. of our Heavenly Father, anointed vocals and outstanding talent, courageous youth, give it up for the Courageous Tribe. Set to give Jesus praise, jump to your feet and make a joyful noise. I saw your courageous you jump in your feet, make a joyful noise for Jesus. Hallelujah.
Giver by heart, the who goes that man and God no go shame us, Prince Emmanuel. Courageous youth in the building. Somebody give the Lord a shout of praise tonight. Amen. Amen. Mommy, thank you Amen. so much. Please, can we celebrate, Mommy? As you're celebrating, Mama, please celebrate, Papa. Uh -huh, that's it. Do you know? what as believers what makes us courageous is because we are aware of who we are in Christ amen so tell somebody I am not alone ah it's because you are alone you move with that courage so we'll share a very simple song tonight it says
said. Everybody say, I'm a rat. 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 
and less Christians more stories less relevance more administration less prayer more flesh less spirit more ministers and ministers we get too busy working for the Lord and forgetting the Lord of the work the cross is not a joke it's a burden to carry 
The cross is not a scam. It's a place of sacrifice that needed the lamb. There's no need to match Allah. People, they grace for Instagram. But you see, the end is near. Our banner should be clear. Because the king is coming in glory and the majesty. Every eyes will see the king. It's time for God's word to go viral with the sound of his invitation, resounding through generations, rebounding hearts in separation. I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it's the power of God to save all that believe. This is a call to action. A call from the one who has already won. A call that will shake kingdoms and nations and bring every lost soul, every hurting heart, and every broken spirit back to him. Oh, brethren, the die is cast. Our gates should be fast. Our, our face should be set. Our goal should be heaven. We should live by faith. We should lean on Christ's presence. We should love with patience and labor with the power of his grace. Don't show up. Don't give up. Don't shut up until you have prayed up, stayed up, and spoken up for the cause of Christ. Because, listen, there are kings there are kingdoms, there are mountains, and there are thrones. It's only a who will reign forever. To his kingdom there is no. I urge you to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Watch, stand fast in your faith and be courageous. But let anyone that thinks he stand take heed. Lest he falls. God bless you. Courageous, you jam those hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. You can do better. Hallelujah. What a mighty, mighty God we serve. Wise words from our father, David Ibiume, in his book, Courage to Possess Your Possession. Papa said, the difference between discouragement and encouragement is who you listen to, God or man. It's testimony time. Please join me as I make welcome the following testifiers as they come to share their testimonies. Great Peters, Ebuka George, Divine God, Dimpa Godsend, Lawrence Rufus, and Innocent Collins. As they come, please pay rapt attention to the following information. A very nice and warm welcome to the 2024 Global Youth Convention of Salvation Ministries, Home of Success. Many, many thanks for joining us. Good news. Entrepreneurs who wish to participate in the Global Youth Convention Trade Fair slash exhibition scheduled this Saturday, 10th August 2024 at the SMHOS Car Park 3 at Omerolo Street, GIA Port Harcourt by 11.30 a.m. should apply via exhibition.smhos.org. Also, there will be specialized training for entrepreneurs on effective selling in online platform this same Saturday at 8 a.m. It will be transmitted to state headquarters only. Those within River State are to attend the training at the global headquarters. Please note that specialized training and trade fair slash exhibition is open to everyone, non-members inclusive. Nothing shines without light from God's word. Salvation Word of Life Bible Institute presents us a concession of the International Basic, Advanced and Diploma Certificate courses for this month of August 2024. Advanced Certificate course will be transmitted to branches, while Basic and Diploma Certificate courses will be at the Global Headquarters only. Pastors hosting Advanced Certificate course should please announce at their branches. School begins on Monday 19th and ends Friday 30th of August 2024. Please note, school fee scholarship is available for students and teachers on holidays. For registration, visit swoby.org or call any of the numbers as displayed. Visit the Knowledge Center or e-store at smhoestore.com to obtain messages of the commission and proven materials in hard copy and flash drive. Or subscribe to our monthly collections on MP3 and DVD. Amongst the materials are message, praise for supernatural increase, July 2024, week of spiritual empowerment, glory 2024, MP3 and DVD. Books, courage to possess your possession, only with the success, the power of small beginning, destined for success, that totality of success, see you at the top, succeeding with challenges and how to enjoy ceaseless harvest. Raising children in the nature of Christ in this perverse generation requires the right kind of nurturing. Visit the Wisdom Bank today for the right kind of materials or call the number as displayed. 
to commit to kingdom advancement and expansion, please refer to the detailed information on your screen. Also for profit offering, send your seat to the account as displayed. Those desiring to build worship centers in any of the categories displayed on the screen, please call the Global Missions Office on any of the numbers as displayed. Global Children and Teens Holiday Bible Program comes up in this month of August 2024. For ages 6 to 10, starts from Monday 12th to Tuesday 20th, August 2024. For ages 11 to 15, starts from Thursday 22nd to Friday 30th, August 2024. Participants in Nigerian countries within plus one or minus one GMT time zones can join live classes in any of our branches or online. While all those outside these time zones will do self-paced learning within the same day. To register, pick the forms in our branches or visit smhosleadinglights.org. Registration ends on Sunday, 11th, August 2024. For more inquiries, call any of the numbers as displayed. There will be online foundation class for new converts and believers this Saturday by 9 a.m. That class is designed to give you stability in your Christian adventure and will be transmitted in German, Spanish, Portuguese, French, and Italian languages via smhos.org. However, the class will also be viewed via Salvation TV, YouTube, Facebook, and X. There will also be live class at the Global Headquarters and all the branches by 8 a.m. Ensure you join and make available your writing materials. Applications are invited from suitably qualified candidates to fill immediate vacancies in the following areas in Okma International Academy as displayed. Applicants for the teaching positions must have at least BSc Ed slash B Ed in the relevant subject, minimum of second class owners, master's degree will be an added advantage. Seven years teaching experience, excellent communication and interpersonal skills, and must be conversant with British and Nigerian curricula preparing learners in IGCSE slash WASSCE, IELTS, and SAT SAT. Applicants for non-teaching positions must have at least four years' experience in the field of interest and excellent communication and interpersonal skills. All applications and CVs should be addressed to the college secretary, Okma International Academy, and sent to career at okma.org.ng on or before Friday, 16th August 2024. For further inquiries, visit okma.org.ng or call the numbers as displayed. To receive daily prayers, prophecies, and wisdom quotes for living, like, share, and follow David Biomi on Facebook at David Biomi, on Instagram at David underscore Biomi, X at David Biomi. Enjoy yourself in God's presence. God bless you. Your name and straight to your testimony. My name is Ebuka George Sobunda. I came to thank God for the fulfillment of prophecy during the week of um, July, week of empowerment. Papa said that we should write on our special form what we want God to do for us. And I wrote on a special form that I shall not have any extra year. I shall graduate from Uniport with a good grade. Then when the first batch came out, my name was not among. On Sunday, I sowed a seed and said, now today, the second batch just come out and my name was there. I came to give God all the glory. Your name and straight to your testimony. Hallelujah. My name is Great Peter. My testimony is on God's faithfulness and favor. Prior to this time, I was led to sow a seed that corresponds to my birth age, which I did. And today, I was hugely favored from a friend. I've come to give God all the glory. Today is my birthday. I'm 21. Your name and straight to your testimony. My name is Rufus Lawrence, and my testimony is on healing. I had been experiencing this very excruciating pain and chest tightness as a result of ulcer since August last year. So during the June edition of Time Out with Jesus, when the special music ministration was going on that help has come, I was really touched, I was transported. And then I began to declare with understanding that help has come to me today. So when I got home that very day, I began to take meals that I couldn't take as an ulcer patient and do things that I couldn't do before. And from that moment until now, I have observed myself and discovered that all the pains and symptoms have vanished. Hallelujah. Your name and your testimony. Praise the Lord. My name is Innocent Collins. My testimony is on transformation. During the July week of spiritual empowerment, 
before now, I was smoking. I was a smoker. I used to be a smoker. So during the July week of spiritual empowerment, Papa was ministering to communion. So, and he said, whatever that is not of God should not be in you. I came to it with faith, and I took the communion. Since then, from Tina, I'm not a smoker again. Hallelujah. Your name and straight to your testimony. Good evening, church. My name is Dim Pagosen, and my testimony is a miracle job. Prior to this time, that is this job I'm, I've been expecting, and I've prayed for it, I've waited for it, and I heard Papa say, until you promote God's kingdom, God cannot increase your income. Having heard of that, I decided to pray for the advancement of God's kingdom. It wasn't up to four days, my phone rang. They said, Saints, come and start the job. I'm here to give God the glory. That is the God of this church. Hallelujah. God has been faithful to us as a church. Shall we have more testimonies from our churches and worshippers across the globe? Salvation Ministries Church, besides Shell Filling Station, Proform Road, Airport Roundabout, the Chemso, Kumasi Ashanti Region, Ghana. From Faith Lamutu Osege, I had difficulties for some years back, which made me sell off my landed property to take care of my kids and their education. I joined Salvation Ministries in Kumasi for the first time in May 2024, and ever since then, I have followed the teachings of God's servants. I have been consistent in attending services and programs of the commission. During one of the praise sessions in the month of July 2024, week of spiritual empowerment, God's servant declared that all we lost would be restored. I claimed it and believed that God will do it for me. Since then, my family and I have been enjoying all-round favor. I bought two plots of land at very affordable prices in the same month of the declaration. God restored my lost property. I give God all the glory for restoration and his mercies towards me. Salvation Ministries Church, Portacot Aba Expressway, beside UBA, Rumokrushi, River State, Nigeria. From Chukwemeka, Robert. For two weeks, I had a discomforting mouth disease which caused a lot of pain and bad breath. I prayed with the understanding of the teachings of God's servant concerning the flesh and the blood of Jesus Christ and took the Holy Communion using John chapter 6 and verse 54. After the prayers and administration of the Holy Communion, I immediately received my healing. I give God all the glory. Salvation Ministries Church Kilometer 20 Lake Epe Expressway between Chevron Toll Gate and the Leganza bus stop, Lagos State, Nigeria. For a year now, I have been applying for a full scholarship with a school but kept getting rejected. I applied again around the June 2024 week of spiritual empowerment and included it in my July to December 2024 expectation form. I prayed and praised for divine favor but still got rejected. With a holy anger, I applied again and told God it was my last application. I practiced God's servant's teachings on praising and worshiping God for an hour. And the following week, I got an acceptance letter via email from the school. I have already resumed school and I return all glory to God. Salvation Ministries Church, Decagon, beside Ewell Filling Station, Benin Republic. From Aben, Victoria, I had recurrent abdominal pain that was agonizing and discomforting for several weeks. On Sunday, 28 July 2024, after the third service, I was prompted to stay back for the fourth service, and I obeyed. During the fourth service, God's servant blessed handkerchiefs as instructed by God. In faith, I lifted my head tie as I had no handkerchief. On getting home, the pain resurfaced, and then I remembered my blessed head tie. I placed it on my stomach, and to my greatest surprise, the pain ceased. I had observed myself for some days, and the pain has entirely gone. I return the glory to the God of Salvation Ministries. Oh, I'm perfect of all these wonders. Let's rise and return all the glory to him. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise for the mighty works you have done. Be thou exalted, be thou glorified. In Jesus' precious name, may be seated, praise the Lord. Papa said, the company you keep determines what accompanies you. In our midst this evening, we have Bishop Daniel Onoa of Oasis of Love Chapel International Port Harcourt, 
We also have Bishop, Doctor, and Pastor Mrs. Ian Odusin of Avila Good News Ministries, Portacot. We have Bishop Chuka Agwebu of Grace and Progress Family Church, Asaba Delta State. Bishop, Doctor, and Reverend Mrs. Marvin Jack of Gospel Faith Global Ministries, Portacot. Pastor Akin Rotonwa of Christ Rem Gospel Church, Yenagua Baeza State. Pastor Mrs. Opuene Onoa of Potters Ark Assembly, Aba Abia State. Pastor Agape Celestine of Living Ark Covenant Ministries, Portacot. Pastor Emmanuel Johnson of Christian Evangelical and Prayer Ministries, Lagos. And other servants of God, you are also specially welcome. And on behalf of God's servant, you are coming for the very first time to this church. We we'll also welcome you specially. God will bless you. With your heart set and heaven being set to bless you, let's rise to our feet as we appreciate the Lord while we welcome Pastor B.A. for the administration. God bless you. Lord, we give you praise in Jesus' precious name. Shall we pray? Father, in the precious name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. We give you glory and praise for this moment. Precious Holy Spirit, we pray that this atmosphere will become your atmosphere. And let everyone be richly blessed. Let your word flow without hindrance. Transform, challenge, and change us. Let the unction back in this commission and your servant David may answer to me. Bless your people beyond measure. In Jesus' exalted name. With a big hand clap for the Lord, please get seated. I count it a unique privilege to be the one to share with us in this third day of the Global Youth Convention, Tag Courageous. It's a privilege given to me by God through his servants. So I'd like to appreciate you for it. Thank you, Ma, my older brothers in the faith, and every one of you seated out there. It's my prayer that your life will not remain the same. In the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The central theme is tagged courageous. But I've been given a subtopic, unleashing your potentials. Unleashing your potentials. Unleashing your potentials. That sounds like a big word. But it's simple. It means releasing your potentials. Now, cowards find it difficult to go forward. Cowards find it difficult to go forward. As a matter of fact, Shakespeare, the great author, said they die many times before their death. So cowards find it difficult to go forward. And Shakespeare, the great author, said they die many times before their death. Cowards neglect their rewards. You can find that from Eliab, the older brother of David. Cowards neglect their rewards. It takes courage to enjoy prestige and it takes boldness to enjoy greatness. Going forward from now, your greatness will not be denied. I say your greatness will not be denied and your prestige will be prominent. If you believe it, your amen will show it. Hear this. A man who embarks on a journey with no defined destination can never get there. A man who embarks on a journey with no defined destination can never get there. If you are traveling, you must know where you are going to arrive. Or else you will never get there. If you get into a park, for instance, you are going to use a vehicle, your, ve your movement is going to be a vehicular movement, you must know the definite vehicle to enter into, to get to your destination. If it's an aircraft, you must know your location, or else it's going to be a problem. We are going somewhere. <laughs> now, Imagine, just picture a scene. You have an author before you, maybe a Nobel laureate, somebody who writes very well, an author before you, standing before you. Maybe a professor, somebody that writes very well, write plays and other things. And now you want him to write something. And then you bring a clean sheet of paper. And you give that clean sheet of paper to him 
and you say, right. You have given an instruction, but it's confusing. True or false? Now, if you give it to him, he's loaded though. He can write. But the problem is this. What will he write? Loaded with everything. Knows how to write very well. We write things that are readable, that are enjoyable. But you just told him, write. And then there's a problem. What will you write? What will I write? That's the question. What do you want me to write? Now, many of us are loaded with potentials, but no definite purpose. And so we are grossly confused in life. We have loaded potentials like the professor. But because there is no definite purpose for living, it becomes a problem. In Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 5, we know it's a popular scripture. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. Now verse 6 says something very, very striking. He said, Isaiah said, and the Lord said to Isaiah, cry. And Isaiah said, what shall I cry? What shall I cry? Many are loaded with potentials, but with no purpose for living. They do everything. They see life as a gamble. They see life as an experiment. Anything that comes my way, I will do. Now, nobody succeeds like that in life. Nobody make impact like that in life. You can never make impact doing everything. If you are a jack of all trades, you are a perfect master of nothing. Many are just like that. Now, this is the key to excellence. This is the key to success in life, in destiny, in ministry, in every department of life. If you have not found what you have been definitely created for, it becomes a problem. So life will be a mere experiment and a gamble. Anything that comes my way. I will do. Today, God will open you up Amen. to something definite in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Many are multily talented and multily confused. Many are multily talented and multily frustrated because they don't know what exactly they are designed for. You are not an all purpose product, you are not an assembly line product. Yes, you are not Achakate Guano, <laughs> gathered and prize. You are a special product designed by God to accomplish a particular assignment. For this purpose, the Son of God, not for these purposes, for this purpose, the Son of God was made manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. First John chapter 3 verse 8. To this cause was I born. To this cause, not to these causes. John chapter 18 verse 37. To this cause, to this end I came. For this cause I have come. Not for these causes. Not for these ends. For one assignment. For one assignment. Now listen, that, this is very important. That's why you can see a pastor leave Nigeria to go and watch plate. In America. This, thing, this is the reason. Not knowing what you are called for. So you see yourself as an employee and not an, a called man. An employee can deviate. A called man will stay where he is. You do hear what I'm saying? It's only madman that plays all the sports. Okay. Let me paint a picture. Just imagine. I have a racket in my hand for badminton on my right. On my left, I have another racket again for long tennis. Then I am wearing a football jersey. <laughs> on top of it, I am wearing a basketball jersey. And then I am also carrying a spike shoe on one hand like this. And then I'm also carrying a boot on the other hand. Then I carry one hand, this course, another hand, short put. Then I carry javelin on my back. If I appear, you will call me a perfect madman. <laughs> it's only a madman that plays all the sports. The question is this. What are you designed for? What are you designed for? Please.
is, this is what we need to ask God because he has starts our journey. Potentials will be of no use if purpose is not discovered. Potentials will be of no use if purpose is not discovered. If you can't discover purpose, if you can't find purpose, potential is useless. All your gifts, all your talents, all your abilities, all your capabilities, all your strengths will be useless. If you don't find purpose, what you have been designed by God to accomplish, what is your mission on earth? Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. I consecrated you for one thing, a prophet, not an evangelist, not a pastor, not a teacher, not an apostle. I consecrated you a prophet, definite one. Definite one, a prophet. So if you don't know this, life will be going on in cyclic frustration. That will not be your testimony in Jesus' precious name. So if, for instance, I want to know what God has designed me for, what will I do? It's very simple. I will go to the one that designed me. His name is Jehovah Almighty. Based on Psalm 100, verse 3, it is him that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. So I will go to him and I will ask him, Lord, you are my maker. What do you design? What have you designed for me? He said, call upon me and I will answer you and I will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. We quote it, we cite it, but we don't practicalize it. That's in Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3. So I will go to him in prayers. Maybe ask some fasting to eat. I say, God, I want to know what you have designed me for. I don't just want to live anyhow I like. I don't just want to do whatever comes my way. There is something definite you have designed for me. What is that thing? That is one. Two, what is it that I do and I am fulfilled and I have peace? What is that thing that I do that I am fulfilled and I have peace? It's a good thing, no? Not a bad thing. Something that will help humanity out of their challenge, of their problem. What is that definite thing that I do that people always commend me? That is a pointer to what God has designed you to be. When you see certain things, you react on your inside. There is something you hate. You want to correct. What is that thing? There is something you hate within you. When you see the environment not good enough, there is something you hate. And you want to correct that thing. That is a pointer to what God is also calling you to do. What do you have flair for? What can you do with ease? Not what you study in school. Oh. No, no, no. No, not what you study in school. You can study so many things in school, but you find out that those things are not even flowing inside you. Maybe your father says you go and read law. And anything about law, it's getting you irritated and getting angry. Or your, your mother says you must read medicine. My daughter, you must read medicine. <laughs> and then you come out living like somebody who read medicine. <laughs> Several years ago, they gave um, two brothers for me to cancel. I was sitting at the back then where at the headquarters, I was sitting at the back. They gave me the f uh, form to cancel these two young men and they came. Their mom came with them. And then one was doing well. One was an engineering student, was doing perfectly well. The other one was a, med a medical student, but he wasn't doing that well. So I canceled with the engineering student. He was telling me everything. He was very happy. He was doing the a medical student wasn't smiling at all. So I got the hint on his face and I told the mother, Please, can you excuse us? Excuse us, go outside and stay. And the boy said, Sir, I don't like what I'm doing. <laughs> but she's the one taking care of my bees, so I just have to do it. If not, I don't like it. That guy is a square peg in a round hole. Yes. So he will have to go back to what God has originally designed him to do. Praise God. This is where the journey starts. I pray God will give you understanding in Jesus' mighty name. Now, what is unleashing your potentials? What is unleashing your potentials? It is maximum utilization of the gifts. What is unleashing your potentials? It is maximum utilization of the gifts. Maximum utilization of the gifts. Talents. Abilities and capabilities 
in you. It is maximum utilization of the gifts, talents, abilities, and capabilities in you. To the glory of God and to the benefit of humanity. I go by it. I say it is the maximum utilization of the gifts, talents, capabilities, and abilities in you to the glory of God and for the benefit of humanity. Everybody has a gift. Everybody has a talent. There is no ungifted person in life. Please take note. Everybody has a gift. Everybody has a talent. There is no ungifted person in life. Matthew chapter 25. If you read from verse 14 through to the end with special emphasis on verse 15, the Bible says, Give to every man according to his several ability. Matthew 25 verse 15. It says, Give one. He gave five talents. Another one, he gave two talents. Another one, he gave one talent. And then he told them to go and trade with it, to use it. That's the unleashing. That's the releasing. To use it, to trade with it. Many of us have the talent, but we don't use it. We keep crying, God, I want a change in my life. Meanwhile, God has deposited inside you that can change your life. There is something with you, if you don't use it, it will not work. It will not change your life. Moses had the rod in his hand, but the rest he remained the same. He was crying to God with the rod in his hand. The power, the potency of the rod can only manifest when that rod is stretched forth and used. The rod is capable of causing a breakthrough in the sea, but it will never work until that rod is stretched forth. Many of us now are in the employment market when we are loaded with potentials that can change the world. We are carrying fire from place to place and God has blessed us with several abilities and talents. If we talk here, people enjoy what we say. If we write, our writings are readable, they are lovable. Then why not be an author that we write simple plays so the world can buy? That's how you know Chinua Achebe. That's how you know most of the Nobel laureates that you know. Just by writing something. Just by writing something. There is something inside you. There are fashion designers. When they cut cloth, they cut it to pieces. When you see what they are sewing, you will be afraid. And yet, they are still looking for job. They are carrying fire from place to place. When those people can comfortably be the Elvis that you are hearing. Those people are, can comfortably be the Fregamos that you are hearing. Everybody in this life has something inside you that can change your world. If you can look inwards. There is something in your house. That's what Elijah said. There is something in your house. There is something within you craving for expression. Use it. Mm -hmm. You know why we have to be very careful? We are in a world where certificate is now carried so much. You see people have four PhDs and have no job. Six masters with no job. You are a master failure. <laughs> Six masters, no job. Just going to school for nothing. Just going, going to school for nothing. Reading, writing, sitting for exam, reading, writing, and nothing to show for it. Nothing to show for it. The world is not looking for your certificate. They are looking for proof and result. The world is not looking, your certificate means nothing to nobody, sir. It means nothing to nobody. Yeah. It means nothing to nobody. If you have first class in engineering, mechanical engineering, and my tractor is broken down, I tell you, go and fix it. Carry your paper and go there and go and slap the tractor. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to fix my tractor. That's all. Paper notwithstanding. You know, we have a form of education, in this, particularly in this part of the world. We are somebody who will come to be blind as a driver. They will now ask him, who is the president of Nigeria? What has that one got to do with driving? Who is the president of Nigeria? They will give him an exam to see. That, that's the reason why you have a lot of folks that, you can, that cannot. You come for driving interview. See key. Yeah, enter the car. Drive the car. That's all. That's, that's all. Enter the car. I enter with you. Drive wrongly, you fail. That's all. That's all. That interview is over. 
interviewed one day they go and go and say, we should interview people. I interviewed a young boy. He has two master's degree in two reputable universities in the United Kingdom. He couldn't express himself. And it was from my parents' village. I was angry. <laughs> two reputable universities. I said, what? That's what we do now. Instead of somebody to work on what he already has, it's just to be sitting for exam and passing and sitting for exam and passing and thinking that he is succeeding. <laughs> that one is a taste by moonlight. <laughs> joke. Complete joke. Complete joke. God deliver us in Jesus' mighty name. We have to say this. We have to say this because most of now, you know, if you just you see a trend going on now, everybody wants to just join that bandwagon and then follow the trend. You see what is trending. I want to go to school. I want that one is not a bad thing. Go to school, get masters, get PhD, no problem. But then the question is this: What next after that one? After that, what next now? Employer give you carry such big CV and come, and employer say, okay, come enter my office, come and do something for me. And then you, an accountant with PhD, all you know is double column cash book. <laughs> hey, you are a common student. You are a common student. You will cause more problem for yourself when you present a sound CV without knowing exactly what to do. So we must guard against this. It will help us if we understand what God has deposited inside us to change the world. And the world will be changed in Jesus' name. Amen. How to unleash your potential. Number one, how to unleash your potentials. Number one, believe in risk-taking. How to unleash your potential. Number one, believe in risk-taking. Great achievers are also great risk takers. So believe in risk taking, great achievers are also great risk takers. You can only flourish when you say, if I perish, I perish. You can only flourish if you say, if I perish, I perish. Esther says so in Esther chapter 4. Verse 16, if I perish, I perish. Those who say if I perish, I perish, they don't perish. You must dare the devil to conquer the devil. You must dare the devil to conquer the devil. The devil you don't dare, you cannot conquer. So you must dare the devil to conquer the devil. Hear this. Blessed are the dodgy. For they shall accomplish nothing. I said blessed are the dodgy. For they shall accomplish nothing. <laughs> you are afraid. You put yourself into trouble when you are afraid. You will accomplish nothing. But you will accomplish something in Jesus' name. Yeah. Now, before, they said, Civic Center used to embarrass men of God in this town. They said they, that was the popular opinion or popular statement. That Civic Center used to embarrass men of God, particularly the main bow. That people, great men of God that went there, some of the people that went there, the they, they all was not even feel up to half. So they concluded that this is exactly how it used to be. Then 2003, November, precisely 11th, we were to hold a program in civic center and everybody concluded that David Bemia is joking to use only his face and not put another person's face maybe a great man of God somewhere he's joking he's playing that it will not work it will disgrace him for we are he was not even interested in that we went there from the first day the place was jammed second day there was no place it spilled over to the next hall behind yes spilled over to the handball court spilled over to the lawn tennis court on this side from the first day, it is risky not to take a risk. It is risky not to take a risk. You must take risk to be able to be a great achiever. You must take risk 
to be able to be a great achiever. Ben Carson shared a story. He said, as a young medical student who was just coming into John Hopkins as a staff of John Hopkins in Baltimore, Maryland, he said he just walked into the office one day and saw a young boy that they used baseball bat on his head. They flogged him with baseball bat so his head was torn like this. The boy was bleeding. No doctor to attend to him. He was bleeding. He was, as he was bleeding, he was dying. Instrumentally, he was dying gradually. <laughs> ben Kasi said compassion moved him. He couldn't stand it. He said, if you see this boy die, that it will affect him emotionally. He was seeing the boy dying, but only him cannot do surgery. And he was a genial person. And so surgeries are done by senior people. Now, how will the boy die? <laughs> if someone called it, the course of nurses, he said, roll this boy into the theater. If this boy dies, his license will be seized from him forever. But if this boy survives, he has broken a record. So there are two ways. So he pushed the boy. He took the risk, pushed the boy into the theater and did the surgery himself. And the boy recovered fully. From there, he was made the director, at the age of 33, he was made the director of pediatric neurosurgery in John Hopkins, a feat that nobody before that time has ever achieved. You see, you must have to take risk in some areas to make mark on the earth. Yes, you have to take risk. If you don't take risk, it's a problem. Benjamin Netanyahu, the prime minister of Israel, was addressing American Congress on the 24th of July last month. Was addressing American Congress. And he came with a young boy, a lieutenant, who was an Israeli paratrooper. The guy was dressed in his uniform and he was talking to American Congress. He referred to the boy, he told the boy to stand up. The boy stood up. And he said, this boy was one of the bravest people that confronted the insurgents that confronted the militants when they came to attack Israel on October 7. The guy ran eight miles on foot. <laughs> you don't know the distance. If you are trekking that distance, minimum it will take you is two hours, 40 minutes. In meters, it is 12,874 meters. Calculate the distance. Now, he ran on foot because he had no car. He ran on foot to the battleground and stood on the battleground and killed as many terrorists as possible, delivered people, rescued them, brought them back in that battlefield. He took the risk of his life. Today is a hero. Standing before American Congress. Introduced by the Prime Minister of Israel. He's a lieutenant. He's not a major general. He's a lieutenant. He's not a general. He's a lieutenant. He's not a lieutenant general. As a low-ranking officer, he was able to take risk. So today it's referred to, not the generals. Those who take risk are those who will be known. Yeah, not by their titles, but by the risk they take. Find out from David and his brothers. David took risk. He was not a military man. They were already generals in the army. <laughs> they were standing there earlier, but being another by Shama, we are already standing Face to face, but coward dies will not allow them to face Goliath. And then this bush boy, who has no training in the military, will confront Goliath and cut off his head. And then they started singing, Saul has slain his thousand, David has slain his ten thousand. Yet it was not a military, not even a recruit, not even a private in the military. This guy was nothing, nothing, a shepherd boy, but known by the entire Israel for accomplishing a feat. God will cause you to be known all over the world. Yeah. Your risk will take you to the limelight. Yeah. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. Number two, locate an enabling environment. To unleash your potential, locate an enabling environment. Locate an enabling environment. Genesis chapter 12, 1 and 2. Yes. Locate an enabling environment. God said to Abraham, Abraham, get out of your country. Get out of your father's house. 
get out of your kindred to a place I will show you. And I will make of you a great nation. Which means that the place Abraham was staying, even though he has the potential of being great, he cannot be great there. That's the meaning. That's to say, even though God has said, I will make of you a great nation, but in that place where Abraham was, when God told him to live, he cannot make himself great in that place. And that place, no matter how hard he tries, he cannot be great. Because that place is an anti-great place. Listen, locations are very important. No matter how powerful and how potent a seed is, it will die and become useless on a bad soil. No matter how powerful a seed is, it will become useless on a bad soil. Location is very, very important. <laughs> hey. hmm. Go to where you are celebrated, not where you are tolerated. Be interested in where you are elevated and not where you are relegated. Be interested in where you are elevated and not where you are relegated. Environment affects performance and performance influences achievement. Environment affects performance and performance influences achievement. Environment affects performance and performance influences achievement. I will tell you a life story of what is happening in this Olympics. <laughs> this Paris 2024. There's a young girl of Nigerian descent that won silver medal for United States of America. You know her? Annette Achimwoki. That's her name. Now, there's a particular game they call Amatro. That one that had ball like this, that had iron like this, that they turn, 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 and throw. Yeah. That girl was supposed to compete for Nigeria. She came and was a part of the contingent that went for the 2020 Tokyo Olympics. When she got there, she was disqualified. What was the reason? They were supposed to do out-of-competition testing three times. That is athletic integrity unit requirement. You must do out of competition three times before the Olympics. Now, Athletic Federation of Nigeria refused to, whatever reason, nobody knows, refused to do that out of competition testing three times for her. So when she got there to Japan, they refused her to compete. She asked them why. Said her people did not do the testing. Ten of them were disqualified. She has dual citizenship. She is American by birth, but of Nigerian descent. She wanted to compete for Nigeria, but was relegated. She went to America. She celebrated. <laughs> this is where people miss it. Go to where you have high demand. Go to where you have high demand. She's the first to win a silver medal in the history of Olympics in that sport, in the whole of America. The first to win a medal, not even silver medal, a medal in that particular sport, amateur, in Olympics. Nobody has ever won a medal in America. She's the first. Today she's celebrated of a Nigerian distance because of carelessness of people only God knows. May God deliver them in Jesus' name. Amen. If favor of Philly compete for Nigeria next time, it will take only the hand of God. A child will train for four years, come, and then because of carelessness, you will not register for 100 meters. The care was frustrated. Listen to me. Anybody that wants to succeed must locate the right place to succeed. If David Bume was in Lagos, this ministry wouldn't be here. God is interested in places and God is interested in locations. You see, the message of Jonah will not be accepted in Tarshish. It will be accepted in Nineveh. Everybody has a location. Everybody has a place. 
locate your own place. Locate your own location. If not, you are not going to perform. Please take note. There's a place where you will sell and there's a place where you will not sell. Look for the place where you will sell. Where a market will sell where? <laughs> the market of a whale will not sell in the river. It will sell in the sea, in the ocean. The market of a monkey will not sell well in the desert. It will sell in the forest. The market of a lion will not sell well when it's in the cage. It will sell well when it's in the jungle. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The market of an eagle will not sell well in the house. It will sell well on the mountain. Find where your own market will sell. Number three. Be a master over your challenges. Be a master over your challenges. Learn to manage your emotions and your deficiencies. Be a master over your challenges. Learn to manage your emotions and your deficiencies. You have a deficiency, please manage it. Don't allow that deficiency to affect your potential. <laughs> yes. The reason for that deficiency is so that you can look towards your efficiency and forget about your deficiency. Yes. After the 100 meters, the winner of the 100 meters in this Olympics that is still going on, Paris 2024, his name is Noah Lies, okay? An American. <laughs> After he won the 100 meters, he tweeted on X that he has several ailments he has been battling with. Listen, no. 100 meter champion. Several ailments he has been battling with. <laughs> he said he had a problem of asthma and he's still there. A problem of dyslexia. Dyslexia is difficulty to learn. To learn. To read. You will read one thing over and over. People who are suffering from it, they read one thing over and over and over and over. They find it difficult to learn. He has that problem. Number three, he has anxiety and depression disorder. I'm an orphan. My mother has died. My father has died. I say, welcome. My own mama too don't die. My father don't die. <laughs> welcome to the company of orphans. We are together. You're my brother. Welcome. Sit down. <laughs> Guy, face your life. Leave those nonsense. Your parents didn't train you in school. Train yourself in school. Go forward. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Go forward. Simone Bias, the girl that won the gymnastics for United States of America, Simone Bias, she was somersaulting, somersaulting, somersaulting and broke her leg. She didn't give up. She tied it and continued with it and won gold. Yeah, this Olympics, this one. I'm not talking of the other one. This one. She broke her leg and tied, brought uh, the bandage, tied her leg and continued. Stop giving excuse. Sir, it is where? Where we are living, we cannot do business. People are not doing business in that place. Sir, where we are living, it is where. In fact, my mother didn't take care of us. She just left us like that. Since how many years you have been saying this thing? 26 years. You have been saying this thing. 26 years you have been saying this. Your mother left you. You will be saying it until you are 56. God deliver you in Jesus' name. Finally, embrace personal development. Embrace personal development. Embrace personal development. We close here. Embrace personal development. Embrace personal development. What you have in your school is superior to what you studied in school. What you have in your school is superior to what you studied in school. Formal education is good, but informal training is better. Formal education is good, but informal training is better. The world is tired of theories. The world is tired of theories. It's time we observe. It's time we become bookworms. It's time we become fast thinkers. It's time we become disciplined self-trainers. It's time we become bookworms. It's time we become keen observers. It's time we become fast thinkers. It's time we become disciplined self-trainers. I go over it again for the final time. It's time we become bookworms. It's time we become keen observers. It's time we become fast thinkers. And it's time we become disciplined self-trainers.
trainers. If you must get to the top, rise to your feet. It's not woo. <laughs> you have asked something now, work on it. Praise God. Now, power will come to minister, so we'll not we'll leave the prayers. Now, please take note. The journey starts with Christ in you. Potentially, you will make no sense if Christ is not in you. Christ in us is the hope of glory. So, Christ must first be in you before the potential and the purpose will make sense. So, if you are not born again and you need to give your life to Jesus, please say this words after me. Say with me, Lord Jesus, come into my life. I accept you as my Lord and personal Savior. Wash me clean with your precious blood. I stand before you justified. Holy Ghost, take your place in my life. In Jesus' mighty name. If you say that prayer, please, others will sit down. You just stay standing. Don't sit down. Just stay standing. They will attend to you if you say that prayer. Please, all those that say that prayer, stay standing and you'll be attended to. Praise God. If this is your first time of worshiping with us, on behalf of Jesus, the head of the church, and God's servant, the lead pastor of Salvation Ministries, David Biomia, we welcome you in Jesus' precious name. Please do well to stand to your feet if this is your first time of worshiping with us. We love you. We consider you a very, very important personality. A cream de la cream of the kingdom. And we believe God with you this evening that your life will remain greater and greater, better and better all day long. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Those close to them, please give them a warm hand shake and welcome them warmly. God bless you. One more time, let's appreciate God. Offering time. Second Corinthians nine, verse seven. Every man, as he proposeth in his heart, let him give not grudgingly, or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. It takes courage to be a cheerful giver, and Papa is a giving father who is courageous at it and has taught us always to, for, that for us to keep winning and stay winning, we must always give once and again. So therefore, I enjoy everyone to package a worthy offering to the Lord, your tithes, your kingdom investment, your prophet offering, the online worshipers, Follow the short codes on your screen. Lift it up to God. Father, we thank you for an opportunity to give to you. We ask that you bless every hand lifted tonight and turn our situations around in the name of Jesus. Cast your offering. Choir.
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. How many of you are blessed with the message? Good messages don't make good people. I repeat, good messages don't make good people. Until you put the message you have heard to practice, you cannot get results. That you hear a good message will not produce results. Until you put it to practice, what you have heard. Yesterday we are blessed. I wish everyone to get the tapes, yesterday's message, and today's message. Most times we think you know. It's when you go in and you have not known anything. What he taught today means that nobody is permitted to fail. Because if you're failing somewhere, don't give an excuse. From what was taught today, nobody should fail amongst us. Because there's something in you that should make the world look for you. So if nothing is working, then you're not working. So find out the purpose and what you love to do. In fact, the message summarizes what should make every young person now looking for a job to do something. Idleness is the greatest destroyer of potentials. There are too many idle people. One of the signs of idleness, it will make you to keep talking and talking and talking relevant things. Everything you see on social media, you know. And young people, please hear this. Few days, I started looking on why educated people are poor. I said, do these young people go to, I, I saw why educated people are poor. And I began to go through that line. In fact, most educated people are very poor. Certificate does not bring wealth. After you acquire it, you have to develop something for wealth to come. Circular salary will never make you to be rich. And I wonder what you're doing on social media. Social media should be where you improve your mind. Are you going to answer now? I began to look. Things that make people poor. I was listening to Warren Buffett. Ten things that make you poor. And I look at them. One is buying a house on mortgage. I said, well, this is very educative. Two, traveling. You are tra traveling takes money except you're rich. Is the easiest to be poor. Three, student loan. Because you pay it back when you graduate. Everybody who takes loan cannot be able to come out of that 10 years. So when you know all those things, you now know how to manage your life. But you people go to social media to abuse people. Don't be in this church and abuse anybody on social media. That's not your business. Go and improve your mind. From what we are taught today, is challenging. Anybody in this church doing nothing, go to the person and say, my friend, what are you doing for life? I permit you. To ask the person, you mean with all the things they taught you, you are still idle? You must all be busy. You must all be what? Nobody in this assembly is permitted to say, I'm looking for a job. No, create one. And God will bless you. We are blessed yesterday with Pastor Bidimot. We are blessed with Pastor Abie. Give us a big hand. <laughs> to him. I also learn something because when they teach, I learn more. Are you getting what I'm saying now? It challenges me to also shift. Because the word of God is for everyone. Don't say that the time of this I talk is for my wife. It's for you. Sometimes we look at the wrong place. He said, okay, they say, it's my, it's my husband. You. <laughs> that you went to work doesn't mean you are working. <laughs> if nothing is working where you're working, they are not working. If you're working, the results will show. Because I went to work and then there's no improvement in the assignment. You will be living in an asylum. Let's just show that you are working. Are you guys now? The only proof of, of work is results. If a man has no result, he will end up with insults. So, <laughs> go ahead. Are you guys saying now? Don't say, uh, you know, I go to work. I was in the office this morning. What did you do? <laughs> in fact, God bless all these young men. 
Even if I relax, I can have young men to preach in this church for full one year. Everybody's loaded, including you who is copying notes. <laughs> but you know, I won't relax. So they challenge me too, because if people under you know more than you, you're already in trouble. <laughs> but let me, when it was sharing, I will tell you one secret that the Holy Ghost said to me. He said, don't try to be like somebody else. Sharpen your own strength. And the Holy Ghost said to me, there's no way Benihin can teach this kind of teaching. If Benihin says he wants to leave healing to this kind of teaching, nobody will listen to him again. <laughs> but when he sings healing, you just want to be wrapped. There's no way <laughs> you can be like somebody. Just make sure your own strength is where you are. Don't say now, nah, Pastor A wants to teach like Pastor B. You will go off. I, strength of Samson is new creation. If he goes this way, he may not know what to quote. <laughs> is that true? Uh, each one has his own what? Strength. <laughs> so don't try to be somebody yes. A businessman will teach you service, you like it. If he may go this a beer type, he may come here and not know where to talk about football. <laughs> Everybody has what? Strength. Always go to your own area and sharpen that area. Praise the Lord. Amen. Why I knew that today's word was given to me was I, was, I was trying to ask God what he, he said to me, restoration. The moment I entered and the testimony I had was, I said, okay, he confirms what he gave to me. He said, minister to them on they be restored because you have lost so much. Even the restlessness or whatever rioting has affected most of you. True? You've lost some time. You can't go to office. You can't go to market. Some of you have lost some years in your life. Nothing to show. He said, minister to them on restoration. The convention continues tomorrow. Tomorrow will be the last night. And Sunday, the theme is the productive mind. The productive mind. It's going to be an impartation service. But we go on right now. I want us to end with, I don't want us to pray again after we do. We just pray that everybody will go home safely. Then I'll close with the resolution as prophetic. Is that true? So that we just say the grace after that. Now I pray that everybody leaving this service to go home anywhere will go home safely. Go ahead, in the name of Jesus. Everybody going home from this service will go home safely. No weapon formed against any of us shall prosper. Blood of Jesus. Preserve everyone's life. In Jesus' mighty name. I forgot to tell you, the greatest in the of poor is gambling. Is what? I forgot. It's the greatest thing. No gambler has a future. So all this bet, bet, bet. Is a sign of God. And gamblers don't have a future. There's no gambler. And when they were showing gambling, that's very dangerous. They showed me a footballer from Brazil who is still playing football. He gambles a lot. They now show his picture to show that if this guy does not stop gambling, he will be broke after he leaves. You all know him. I won't call his name. He gambles a lot. No gambler has what? A future. Gambling is deadly. Don't gamble. Don't all this uh, so so bet, cobble bet. Dollar bet. Be careful oh, before you bet your life out. <laughs> How can you be betting? That you, you, are, you are saying, hey, one, one cut. I'm not if you met. <laughs> Gambling is the all this bet, bet is advanced pool. Advanced. Ask your father what is pool, he will tell you. They will stand in front and say, hey, Arsenal versus Newcastle, one cut. <laughs> Better ask Pastor Wakama, he will tell you about pool. His father played pool till he died. <laughs> pool. They will just stand in front of one board. Hey, Arsenal. Now, they modernize pool to betting. It's pool. All right, please, play. Let me do what God told me to do and leave you.
times when I say something, you better have understanding. When I talk about traveling that makes poor, you must be rich before you travel. I didn't travel for nine years. For how many years? I can travel now every day. Don't start your business and then without having capital, you have started traveling. Holiday is good, but you must have the finance to go on holidays. Why not invest that money in business? Today, if I travel, it doesn't affect me because God has blessed me to that level. Is that true? But for the first nine years, I didn't travel. So balance your life. Calculate what you're using to travel and ask yourself, do you have that kind of investment in business? If it's not there, then invest in the business first. Then when you grow to that level, you can now move. Enjoyment is good, but don't enjoy the expense of your future. Don't enjoy the expense of your wealth. In Isaiah chapter 42, verse 22. Thus here, the, Isaiah, for, who is in the studio? They've started again. Isaiah 42, 22. See how many minutes it's taking somebody to put me scripture. And this uh, people robbed. I could have quoted it, but I want you to see it. Spoiled. They are all of them snared in holes. They are hid in prison houses. People I held down. They are for a prey and none delivered for a spoil and none saith restore. God said, There's no man to say restore. If there be a man who will say restore, I will restore them. They are held down. That man who testified, if I didn't come up to say restored, he would have remained there. You most of you, not because you are supposed to be where you are, you are supposed to be bigger than where you are. You have lost so many things in life. God is saying, if there be a man who will say what? Stop. And I've come to stand in that gap. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And today you will be restored. I've seen marriages restored. Finances restored. Positions restored. A particular member of this church was a commissioner. And was sacked on radio twice. Announced on radio. You still remember. Announced that he has been sacked in his office. And he called me. I just laughed. <laughs> and really called me. The student of the butler came to me. And I said, your boss will call you back. He said, sir. I said, we'll call you back. First one, he called him back in 24 hours. Second one, again, he sacked him. Announced on radio that he has been sacked. In balancing the radio. He called me again, he said, this is the second time. I said, the same way he restored, he will restore you back. He restored him back again. If I didn't say restore, God in heaven will be watching. He said, but there was none that saith restore. Now in Joel chapter 2 verse 25, he said, I will restore to you the years that the locusts had eaten. The canker worm, the caterpillar, and the power worm, my great name, which has seen among you. Years. I don't know what setback you had for years. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I decree all the years you have lost in life, 
be restored in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Moses lost 40 years in the wilderness. But within the time he stood, 80 years to 120, God restored him that till today. Moses, if not, God knew that if Moses died, they would have gone to worship him. So God said, come up. I don't want to where they will see your grave. If Moses had a grave, Jews would have worshipped him. So God didn't want him to be worshipped. So he took him to make sure no man knows where he grew. He was restored to the highest level. The greatest leader to ever live. I don't know the things you have lost in life. Today, some of you look at your years and say, what have I ever achieved? I decree on this third day, be restored in the name of Jesus. When God restored the dignity of Job twice, everything you have lost in life, appointments, breakthroughs, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I decree all be restored in the name of Jesus. God is speaking to me. He said you lost some years, but when I restored you, you overtook your past. Whatever years you have lost, that may look as a setback. I declare not tomorrow. Today, God give you supernatural speed. In the name of Jesus. I want your heart to be open. Because God will restore you. He will not restore you just half. In full in the name of Jesus. In Nehemiah chapter 5, 11 and 12. And God said, restore, I pray thee to them. Even this day, their lands, their vineyards, their oliviers, their houses, also the hundred part of the money. So money too can be restored. Now listen, don't think restoration is all, there are things Satan stole from you that you don't know. And of the corn, the wine and oil that he has had of them. Then said they, we will what? Restore them. And we require nothing of them. So that they will not restore me telling you, so you must bring bribe. And we do as thou sayest. Then I called the priests and took an oath of them that they should do according to this promise. Now, I don't know how many things you have lost. Money lost, position lost, marriage lost. Name anything you have lost. Not tomorrow. This moment. Is it whatever you have lost, including your health, in Jeremiah 30 verse 20, I will restore health. Whatever you have lost, I declared restored in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Everything you have lost, anyone and any of my voice have lost. Now, I declare, including your dignity and honor, I declare all restored in the name of Jesus. I preach restoration and one of the young men was driving me his elder brother stayed in the United States for almost 40 something years or there about came back had a son whom he does not know where the son has been he had him in a two state after 40 something years the boy was saying where do I see my father he only knew because his mother told him but I think she's not alive so, they told him in a lele. But after the situation, the boy on his own, on his own, came from a do state, moved to the compound. How did you know the compound? And described that my mother said that the, my father is from this compound. And then saw his father for the first time. After 40 something years, the father gave back to him and left America. But the mother said, your father is from River State, Elele. Restoration. Not today. Everything you have lost. Money they were owing you. I decree, whatever you have lost will be restored in this service. There 
There is a story. One or two of the pastors know, but I won't go into details. The one of the top universities, among the first three universities in the world. A member here was the faculty. I won't call the faculty so they don't go back to search. This university over 200 years. And the person said, sir, <laughs> I won't graduate because of one cause. And I said, in the name of your be restored and you graduate. When by the university, the senior said, we've never done in the history of this university, but we wave off this thing, you graduate. And restored the person and the person graduated. I won't call the name of the school. It's a school you never believe. It's not a school you can go and bribe. It's not a bribe. If they don't bribe, they don't do kickback. But when God wants to do something, laws are broken. I don't know what they have given as condition to others. After this day, all laws will be suspended. Every natural law for your sake will be suspended. My wife is a living witness. I won't share in details. There was something that happened. A mistake from a great man of God that affected me. Very big mistake he made and it affected me. And in the natural, there's no way that can be done. And I said, Lord, restore back that which this man made to be. It's a miraculous way how the dignity was restored back. I can't explain the details. Now, in the name of Jesus, I don't care what you lost before you came. I declare the God who gave me this world today will bring you back with honor and dignity. <laughs> In life, I decree all, not some. God is speaking to me. He said, you are talking to my people. What is it they want to be restored? And it is what you expect and I will do. So if I'm saying restore and you don't have anything in your expectation, I'm just prophesying. He said, tell them they must know what I should restore. So in the one second, what do you want God to restore in your life? Whatever you want. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Be restored in the name of Jesus. Restored in the name of Jesus. Be restored in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and decree in the name of Jesus. Everything I've lost in life must be restored now. Must be restored now. My health, my finances, my honor, my dignity. Open your mouth and declare restoration. Your land, your property. Your blood, your promotion, your position must be restored back. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name be grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet love of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow all the days of our lives. We shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Peace. Look at someone and say, I am fully restored. Come with your soul tomorrow. God bless you.